Hello and welcome to another Tonalist Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is a study after John Francis Murphy's painting, Evening. And the name of my painting is Study After John Francis Murphy, Evening. Yeah. Um, I'm working on the textured board. It might be a little hard to see the drawing stage, although it looks better here uh, at, at home on my computer than it was looking in the camera. So um, I, I just like to paint on that. That's a, like a burn number tone. And I'm painting with some uh, black paint, uh, thin black paint. Pretty sure it might be Mars black in this instance. Um, uh, it was about a couple weeks ago I did the drawing portion and then um, yesterday I got in and, and basically did the rest of the study. <laughs> Pardon me, a little bit of a sniffle there. Um, hopefully it won't be too many. Uh, just bear with me. Um, uh, and I wanted to get this up on the channel because uh, I have more umber paintings. <laughs> but I thought it would be good to inject a little color into the proceedings and so... Um, I went ahead and, and, and made this a, a little priority. Now I've done studies after this painting before. I think two. One is a five by seven, and one is a maybe seven by ten. This is an eight by ten, and uh, I'm really pleased with the way it came out. It has kind of a loose brush fracture to it, but um, when you're talking about John Francis Murphy, especially his later stuff. Um, you really do want to keep things loose and open or you will lose the emotive aspects of the um, you know of the proceedings basically you just won't get it uh, if you're gonna try and get uh, do a study after somebody like John Francis Murphy sorry there might be a little bit of saw noise in the background some guys making infinite cuts uh, with uh, uh, into a piece of wood Sorry about that. I'm going to proceed anyway. I thought he'd stopped. I hoped he'd stopped. And yet, here it is. 8.45 uh, in the morning and he's going for it. So, um, I'm going to read a bit from... Um, there are uh, no books on John Francis Murphy that I know of. If you know of any, please let me know in the comments. Uh, there is quite a good chapter in the book... Um, History of American Tonalism, 1880 to 1920, by David A. Cleveland. Um, if you don't own this book, go out and get it while you still can. It went out of print once, and uh, it got up to like four and five hundred dollars in price. So, um, and before I get into that, you know, I had a few challenges getting the reds uh, where I wanted them on this painting, and the actual greatest challenge I would say is some of the colors in the painting and his painting aren't really um, that doable um, without glazing. There are certain colors that are very, very hard. Uh, I mean, yes, you could mix them, but they have a certain tonality and um, a way they look that is just a byproduct of glazing. It's a, it's you might you might be able to zoom in and, and methodically mix that color, but you you might find that you still aren't getting it. But um, that's okay. I always, when it, in a case like that, when I'm doing a study after the master, I just do my best to get the uh, get it as close as I can, and I probably will do a little glaze on this uh, at a later point in time. Um, now uh, you can uh, follow uh, the whole process um, in the members area uh, live, um, which is you know going to be pretty cool. It's about a just over uh, two, no, just under two hour video, so, sorry for the sniffle, um, not that long, but um, it's it's live. Now, by the way, when you see these changes in warmth or coolness, that is clouds. I have a skylight in my studio, and that is clouds going over the skylight. Nothing I can do about it, so. Um, I think I've... Uh, Actually, I'm going to read about another painting of his, which I think lends itself to this painting just fine. This painting's not in the book, um, but it's very evocative, and it's from that same time period. So, and David A. Cleveland is just the most amazing writer, and he'll inject a bit of history and 
tidbits. He knows he knows so much. He's he's so awesome. David A. Cleveland and John Francis Murphy. They're both awesome. So David A. Cleveland is writing about um, a painting called Sunset Hillside, 1882, and I believe this will be that same period. So. Um, this painting is an early example of the depths of brooding melancholy Murphy could embody in his art, which only deepened as the years went by. A quality one associate with, associates with writer's nocturnes or the tumultuous sor- stormy skies of Ines, for sure. Yeah, when, when Ines gets into that stormy stuff, him and Murphy start to overlap. And they knew each other. They would go out painting and stuff, sketching, what have you. It is indicative of the deep emotional currents of melancholy or grief or pensive longing that weighed on the post-war generation of the 1880s, that such a forbidding work as the uh, do would hold commercial appeal. Death still stalked late Victorian America in ways that we can rarely imagine. Even a well-off and successful couple like so-and-so and the other so-and-so suffered unspeakable tragedies, rich people. Even the rich people suffered unspeakable tragedies resulting from childhood diseases that today are almost unknown. Somber autumnal ren- renderings like this painting retained a hold on the buying public for almost two generations, and now here I am. <laughs> uh, I don't just paint somber paintings, but gosh, I love them. You know, I love stuff like this. I love, uh, I love it. Yeah. Hopefully you do too, uh, and that's why you're here. You want to learn something about it, and uh, <clears throat> maybe try and get some of this good stuff in your work. Yeah. The multiple glazings of the shadowed hillside pursued. Oh, here's a word coming. Produce a depth, a depth of fuglucinous, fuggy. Oh, forget that word. Tone. A depth of tone out of which ranks the brittle autumn shorn plants emerge like phantoms. Mmm, the strange choreographic serenity produced. Good stuff. In 1884, the year of the great controversy over William Merritt Chase's domination of the Society of American Artists, Murphy was singled out in the art yearbook for the all-American quality of his work. And it really is. It doesn't look European at all. Oh, now, by the way, see this purple I'm slapping down? It's possible that that could just be some artifact of whoever took the um, the photo of the painting. And it is a super, super low-res photo. And by the way, just, uh, you know, if you're, if you're making studies after masters and things, you don't need a high-res photo. A high-res photo isn't necessarily going to help you. Um, this was like so low res, it was like maybe 200 pixels across. Um, and I did some things to try and, you know, get it a little bigger, but it hardly matters because it's all about evocative forms and colors. But whether the purple existed in his painting or not, I thought it looked um, pretty cool. And it certainly worked for me, and so I did it. Yeah. And, um,. The key here was like so in an area like the trees where there's not there's no detail. What you're having is modulations of color, um, reds into purples into browns. This whole painting was like that, and the whole top part of the painting is modulations of oranges, reds, browns, and some subtle blues. And then the whole bottom is uh, modulations of reddish greens, which um, we'll be getting to in a sec. You'll just be sitting here watching it, and that'll be. Super groovy. Okay, where are we? Oh, yes. Not only pictures and poems, but modern poets. The subjects, his education, his development, his feeling, and sentiment are all purely American. Few landscape painters unite so much personal style, so much individuality of expression, with so keen an insight into the subtler phases of nature, and so truthful a rendering of her most airy and effervescent moods. Or is it evan, evanescent moods? This guy's got a vocabulary on him. Let me tell you. As evidenced here, by mid-decade, the fundamental tropes of the toneless movement were firmly established in the public mind. The literary mirroring the poetic conceits. 
the subjective transcendentalist stance, the bedrock American ideal. In 1885, during the hiatus of society exhibitions, Murphy not only won second prize, um, Hal Garten Prize, if that means anything to you, you know how it is, that's the past, but was also made an associate of the National Academy of Design. Another indication uh, that the war horses of the Hudson River School had faded even from the walls of the Academy. And so if you weren't aware, um, in fact, I just got an excellent book on the Hudson River School, and the Hudson River guys are great. Um, but their approach is like really big, really detailed, very luminous, and that's one thing that they share in common with the Toneless. Like the Toneless said, yeah, we like the luminosity, but we want more of an expressive quality on a smaller scale. Now I have no idea what size his painting was in real life. Um, this is a 1622 in the book. I wouldn't think that's too far off. Uh, I'm painting it as an 8x10 and I was just thrilled that I I squeezed a little to get it into 8x10 but it doesn't feel squeezed. It feels really nice. So many times that 8x10 proportion can just be it's perfect for uh, portraits um, in the vertical format, but um, in the landscape format it can be a challenge. But I have some nice frames around, so I'm pretty stoked about that. Yeah. Back to the book. Let's see. I want to skip to a bit. Murphy's key strengths was the artist's ability to move from su on from success and take on new challenges. Murphy grew from his best efforts. He knew when he had carried an idea to its uttermost conclusion, and he never repeated the composition of his inspired themes, although he so frequently repeated the char characteristic example. This is good stuff. I don't know if you understood what, what was said there. So, like, everybody's got a certain type of painting in them. Um, I, at the Quarry Art Center, we just had a gal move in next door to me. She's a pretty good painter, and she's doing work that I feel is commercially, you know, accessible. And uh, she's got the style worked out and stuff. And it got me thinking, well, <clears throat> I'm doing my American tonalism <laughs> in, in the heart of New Zealand. It, it's not really the best plan, but... Um, I have to be true to what I am and what I do and every artist needs to hopefully get to that, get to the meat of it. And um, there's a lot of paintings I do that may have similar qualities but I'm not actually repeating myself. What I am is the same person, the same you know, embodiment as an artist. The essence is the same, the experience has changed you know the wisdom has grown or not grown as the case may be um, and that's what's being expressed and that's really what's important I think it's important um, now you can hone it and for me doing a uh, study after someone like Murphy I would love to get more of that into my work even now after you know 10 years of fascination with this and this book we're reading actually came out in in 2010 and it made quite a stir at the time um, I think it's important to um, don't worry about what other people are doing. Don't even worry too much about the marketplace. Worry about making true statements with your art that are emotionally evocative and represent you um, in the truest sense. And that could be moody or it could be bright and cheerful. It all depends. I imagine if it's super bright uh, and cheerful, um, you may not be especially attracted to tonalism because tonalism isn't like that um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be depressing either it's more um, where it's like melancholy or nostalgia come to mind right and uh, I've always had a sensitivity and love for that sort of thing and um, I was immediately attracted to tonalism when I came across it and I had little glimmerings of memory of seeing certain paintings when I was a kid you know, this sort of thing wasn't popular in the 60s when I was a kid, 60s and 70s, but um, I came to it and I love it. Anyway, it looks like we're done with another video. Go check out the members area. Go check out my website. Uh, hey, there's some nice paintings for sale there. 
I don't know. Anyway, appreciate you, and thanks for coming by today. I'll be back real soon with another video. Meanwhile, take good care, and stay out of trouble.